Hey, welcome to another video. You know, I thought about something. I don't know the exact number of videos that I've done. It's at this point, over 60. And I don't think in any of my previous videos, maybe one, but I'm not so sure. I don't think in any of my previous videos I've ever really introduced myself. The, you know, why haven't I done that so far? Why haven't I introduced myself? I don't know. Loser. I, I mean, I can't think of any other reason why not. I, I don't know. But so let me introduce myself real quick before we get into the crux of the my neighbor's dog's coming to visit. He wants a biscuit. Just going to have to wait. My name is Mike Cantwell. I am not a professional landscape photographer. I'm not a professional anything photographer. I am a professional grumpy old man who has a lot of passion for photography. I think I know a fair amount about photography. I've been doing it off and on for over 40 years. And if you want to count the time I shot a few rolls on a Kodak Instamatic back in the 70s, maybe 50 years. But I'd say since about 2017, I've gotten a lot more interested and passionate and tried to learn a lot more about it. In 2017, I had heart surgery and then I had blood clots because of the surgery and there's a whole video on, on that. But it set me back quite a bit and I had a lot of free time to learn about lenses and learn about different things. And so I would think that my photography has grown exponentially since 2017. And I think in 2022 now, might have been the end of 2021, but really in 2022 is when I started this YouTube channel. And one of the reasons why I did it was because it was a challenge to me. I knew nothing about YouTube, how to create a YouTube video. So I wanted to learn how to do it. And then it just kind of became something I just started doing. And sometimes it's hard to come up with topics. Sometimes it's easy. On this one here, I'd like to talk about gear and whether gear is important or not. And sometimes in these videos, I'd like to use an analogy to start off with it. In the last one, if you go back and look at the December prints of the month, I talked about how my reef tank correlated to my photography. And in this one, I'd like to do a brief explanation on why, while I was a commercial real estate broker, how that correlates to whether gear, photography gear that is, matters or not. When I was doing real estate, people would always complain and say, well, I'm not paying for that. And my job was to convince them without lying, but to convince them that they weren't. And gear is kind of the same way, which we'll get to in a second. A lot of times the seller would say, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay that. I like to hire you, but I don't want to have to pay a commission. My reply would generally be, you're not going to. The buyer's going to pay for it. And I'm, well, how so? Well, tell me what your bottom line is. What is it if you got this number, a million dollars, let's say, for your property? If you walked home with a million dollars in your pocket for that property, would you be happy? Oh, yeah. Okay. So when the time comes and you're going to go to the closing table and you see on the closing statement that my commission of whatever it is is still listed on your side of the equation. However, the bottom line is you're going to walk away with a million dollars, which is what your bottom line is, what you told me you'd be happy with. Who's paying the commission? Well, it's coming off on my side. You're not paying the commission, the buyer is, right? Because you got what you wanted, right? So we built that into the cost of the sale. So that's how you convince them. 
The buyer will say, well, the seller has to pay the commission. Well, they are. Just look at the closing statement. It's on their side. They are paying it. It's coming out of their pocket in the end. To me, photography gear is the same way. People can tell you, yeah, gear is very important, and I can convince you that it is, or at least give a good reasoning why it is. Or I can give you a very simple reason why it's not. So the bottom line is, it depends, right? It really depends. Example, you're a wedding photographer. Maybe you're just starting out. And you go to this prospective couple and probably you're going to be more focused on the bride. Typically in real estate, you're going to be more focused on, if, if it's a house, you're going to be more focused on the wife. If it's a commercial property, you're going to be more focused generally on the husband or the male. Doesn't always work that way, but generally. So you walk in and you're, you're talking to the prospective couple, kind of keeping closer eye on the bride, and you show them a little portfolio and give them an idea of what's going on, and you're honest with them. You say, you know, well, I'm, you know, I haven't done a lot of weddings yet. You're honest with them, and you say that I'm relatively new to this. This is why I'm going to give you a little bit maybe a break on the price compared to some other people, maybe you won't. Maybe you'll charge the same. That's a whole nother topic. And maybe the bride or the husband is smart enough to say, well, what kind of equipment are you going to be using? Well, I'm going to be using a whatever, a Nikon this, Canon that, Sony this, whatever equipment you have. Maybe even a Leica. Oh, and they might think they know something. What lenses are you going to use? And then you tell them. He may or may not know. Maybe the wife asks. She may or may not know what they're really asking. But they just hear, well, that sounds good. You must be a good photographer. It's like the old joke when somebody looks at your images and they say, wow, that's a really good image. You must have a really good camera. And then you generally say, well, do you like to cook? Yeah, I'm a real good cook. Man, you must have a really good oven. It's the same thing. All right, so I'm way off track now. They say, okay, well, that's good enough. We'll hire you. Well, maybe before that, some guy comes in and they say, well, how are you going to shoot the wedding? Well, me and my bud John, you know, we've done a whole bunch of weddings. And uh, I got this Samsung phone and it takes really good pictures. But my, bud, my buddy Johnny, man, he got the new iPhone. Man, that thing's rad. That thing, you know, it takes really awesome shots. We can get some really good photos with that iPhone. Does gear matter? They, may get, they might get better pictures with the iPhone than the other guy gets with his Canon. He, they just might be much better at it. I don't know. But I can argue you're probably not getting the job if you tell them you're, get, you're shooting your wedding on an on a iPhone and somebody else comes in and they've got this whole rack full of lenses. All right, so now you got past that and you're going to shoot the wedding and you're in a church and the lighting isn't very good. And all you have is this 24 to 70 f4 lens that's 15 or 20 years old, and it's fuzzy around the edges, and it doesn't do real well in low light. Or you've got you've got a 24 to 70 28 that's relatively new. It's got new coatings on it. Sharp in the corners. Does gear matter? You know, so you can, you can argue it, but same kind of deal. Maybe the guy with the F4 knows how to work around it and has another light with him. He has an assistant that knows how to light certain things. Maybe they've placed lights on the altar 
or some other place where you don't really see the lighting, but it lights up the important parts. They've already scouted it out. They've done it and they know they can get the job done with that equipment. The other guy hasn't scouted it out, standing in the wrong spot. They're going to go and do the ring ceremony and he's not in the right place. Does gear matter? You know, so we can, we can go back and forth with it all day long. For me, the bottom line is gear matters if you know how to use it. If you're new to photography and you go and get a, a Leica M10, M11 and you buy this $9,000 35 millimeter Sumalux lens and you don't have the first idea about lighting, composition, how to really focus in on your subject, you don't know any of the you don't know any of the finer details of photography. Does your gear really help you? No. You don't know how to use it. In the right hands of somebody that's been shooting weddings for 20 years and they could do it in their sleep, gear matters more, I think, just because let's say they're shooting a wedding party and it's a big party. 18 people, 16 people, 12 people, whatever, across. Well, you have to have a, a good enough lens that's going to be sharp on both, end, on both ends, right? Not just in the middle where the last two or three people on each end are a little fuzzy. So gear's going to matter. You're a portrait photographer and you have a really good 1.2, 1.4 lens. Does gear matter? Only if you know how to use it. Only if you know you want to focus on the eye closest to the lens. You have to know how to make it so that you have the proper fall off. You're not, some of these lenses will focus on the eyebrow or even the eyelash instead of the, the eye. Maybe you manually focus it anyway, even though it's an autofocus lens. A lot of times they'll do that. They'll manual focus especially if you're, shoot, you're stopped down to f1.2, f1.4 versus somebody that has a, a 2.8 lens or an f4 lens. Well, with that, the, the, the advantage to that f1.2, f4 lens is you get a beautiful fall off from the, from the eye going back and that skin looks a lot better. It might, the background, the bokeh in the background might be a lot more pleasing. So then, yeah, gear matters. I guess what I'm really trying to say is, and why, one of the reasons why I introduced myself the way I did, was because I, I'm not trying to sell you anything here. I'm, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I don't, uh, you know, no one's paying me to take these videos. I don't have a big enough channel. You know, I'm, I'm just the professional grumpy old man. So I have zero reasons to lie to you. I'm just giving you my opinion. And my opinion is it's really nice to have good lenses if you know how to use them. And in time, my advice would be once you get better at photography and you understand them, you should thrive to get better lenses. Camera bodies don't mean as much. Now, some of the Leica people probably screaming at me now saying, well, Leica has the most beautiful sensors I've ever used. That could very well be true. So maybe one day you do strive to way overpay for your camera and your lenses like most Leica people will admit that they do. I know sometimes in these videos I pick on Leica Honestly, I'm just jealous. I wish I could afford them because I, they probably do have, from, from what everybody says, they probably do have the best sensors of, of anybody, even probably better than the Sonys. So when I, when I tease, it's mostly out of jealousy maybe. I don't know. That's not to say that I don't have a, a nice setup because I do. I admit I'm, I'm very fortunate in the, 
in the camera bodies and the, and the lenses that I do have. Do I try to always upgrade my lenses? Yeah, I do. You know, I, I know that gear matters to an extent, and that's the other side of it. It only matters to an extent. There's times when I realize that, you know, I'm not a good enough photographer to really need all these fancy lenses. I don't make a living from it. I do sell prints occasionally. I do. I do have this YouTube channel. So it's nice to have nicer equipment, but I'm not like some of these big photography channels where these guys are making their living from their, from their gear and from, you know, they're making a living using their equipment to them. Gear matters more, but with them, sometimes not all of them, uh, you know, I'm not going to name names, but sometimes you have to be a little suspicious when they're pushing certain products. Me, I admit I'm a Nikon shooter. I've been loyal to Nikon. Nikon doesn't give me squat. In the end, what I'm really trying to say is get the best gear you can afford that you know how to use. That's really the only advice I can, I can give you. You know, if, if you're new starting out and you can only afford a crop sensor camera with a kit lens that comes with it, buy it. You got to start somewhere. You know, use that. Some people will progress a lot faster than others, just like in anything. You know, people play sports, they, they take up golf and all of a sudden they're a decent golfer. And then a guy like me can hack around for 40 years and still suck. Loser. So, you know, it's going to be the same way with, with photographers. There are going to be some people that pick it up rather quickly. They just have an eye for it. They have a great eye for lighting and composition. And those kind of people should progress on and get better lenses. But for people that, you know, they pick up their camera once every 90, 120 days and rattle off a few shots here and there, maybe their kids or whatever. So you got a crop sensor camera with a, with a kit lens. Great. There's nothing wrong with that. Learn how to use it. Be better at it. I've rambled on enough. It's time to log off. I appreciate it. If you want to hang around and hear me ramble some more, please like and subscribe. And until next time, take good care. Grumpy old man, signing off.